Paint is an eye-opening experience that highlights the hardship and exploitation that goes on behind the scene throughout the visual art industry. In a creative field, there's a tendency for people to be unfairly compensated when they are passionate about their work. This is because exposure and publicity is commonly treated as sufficient compensation. An artist's work may be unfairly criticized or judged because they don't understand the artist. Players witness those struggles by playing as independent artists who are trying to make a name for themselves. Our game is a strategy-based tile and card game which simulates some elements of creative industries. Players must spend their resources wisely to create artwork, do commissions, submit their artwork to galleries, and more. This is all done in order to become the artist with most recognition. Our game depicts the struggles many artists face in their lives, a reality which many artists don't realize. Our goal is to encourage players to support their local artists in any way they can, and to have further empathy for those in creative industries. One goal of our game was to achieve people fun, playing games for the social atmosphere. In our game's current state, this is mainly seen in the way that players may work together to block one another from entering a location. Players will also enjoy competing against each other to try and gain the most recognition in the game and will more than likely savor others' misfortune upon drawing negative cards. The broad goal of our game is to achieve transformative fun, meaning players are exposed to a new experience or perspective that has the potential to shift their worldview. Additionally, we wanted to create a game that was re replayable and still enjoyable. Our process began with us using Figma to start brainstorming some of the different struggles that artists may face in the industry. Some of the ideas that we identified and focused on were difficulties getting art seen, difficulties with clients, problems with morale, and ultimately the problem of not being treated as human. We then took these ideas and branched them off into potential cards and card effects. We also listed out some general ideas for the resources and mechanics of the game. With these ideas mapped out, we began prototyping in Tabletop Simulator to come up with the board layout and test our ideas. We quickly realized that we had too many resources to keep track of. To solve this, we slimmed everything down to two, recognition and energy, which is used as a universal action resource. Some of the general critiques we got from our playtesters was that our game was a bit complicated as a result of the general rules, the way the energy system worked, the types of decks at each location, and the overlap between each location. We resolved these issues by clarifying and splitting up the rules, simplifying the energy chart, reducing the decks at each location to two, and reducing the amount of overlap between locations by making each one's cards more unique. These changes were in addition to balancing the card effects and card ratios and implementing new ideas, such as allowing players to choose what they lose when drawing negative showcase cards. This was done to make the gallery a little less punishing and to also incorporate additional meaningful dilemmas. To play paint, players must manage their energy and visit the different locations in order to gain recognition. At the beginning of their turn, Players must note their total energy and refer to the energy cost chart. This is because the energy cost of the location's more powerful cards varies depending on a player's total energy at the beginning of their turn. For example, players with lower energy will find it more difficult to acquire the more powerful cards. Next, players use energy to move across the board at a rate of 1 energy per tile. When players are at a location, they spend energy to acquire a card. The less potent cards only cost 1 energy, whereas the more powerful ones cost at least 2 energy. Once a player acquires a card, it is flipped over for all to see, and the player must adjust their energy and recognition accordingly. At the end of their turn, players gain 5 energy, which allows them to begin strategizing their next turn. There are 4 different locations in the game. The art studio is where players start, and this is the place where they can create artwork to fulfill features and showcases, and commissions to complete connections. These cards are kept in players' hands until the tasks are fulfilled. In general, the agency is where players risk recognition in hopes of gaining more recognition. It is also where players go to complete connections that they must fulfill within the specified time frame. The agency also has cheaper, less potent cards called opportunities, where players can take a smaller risk in hopes of a smaller return. The gallery is where players go to spend their artwork on features and showcases to gain greater amounts of recognition. However, Players may be surprised when they discover that all the work and resources that go into preparing for the gallery may result in a negative impact. For example, players lose recognition when drawing a negative feature card. When drawing a negative showcase card, players have the option to lose either recognition for a long-term impact or energy for a more immediate impact. 
The fourth and final location is the rest area. Players can recoup their energy here by obtaining either the one cost downtime cards, which have lesser effects, or the more potent day off cards, which have varying energy costs. The main dilemma of our game is the dissonance of expected game mechanics. Players might expect that they can simply make artwork and commissions and go to the gallery and agency to methodically gain recognition, but will quickly realize that things don't always go as expected. They must learn the different risks and rewards of the board locations to successfully play the game. In the end, we accomplished our goal of creating a transformative game that opened outsiders' eyes to the difficulties of creative industries. Players have to work hard to figure out the inner workings of the industry. They must balance out their risk versus reward actions. The highlight of the game is how card effects vary from what players expect, although it might be demoralizing sometimes. Unlike a non-transformative game, there's no clear-cut path to gaining recognition as an artist. All the time and resources that went into creating and showcasing their work may result in negative outcomes. As for room for improvement, we would want to revisit the rest zone location and perhaps incorporate in smaller effects on the regular tiles, as well as further balancing of negative and positive effects. We would also want to look into more people fun elements, such as sabotaging or offering up the players different roles, like art dealers, clients, etc. Overall, we felt that Paint was a success. We were able to create an eye-opening experience by contrasting our players' expectations of creative industries, and we greatly enjoyed the process of researching and developing the game. Thanks for watching! Please smash that like button and subscribe!